Hello YouTube, hi, my name is Mark and this is Nixon Motorsports. This channel is all about motorsports from racing to exotic cars and even simulators. Today's video, we're going to get into chassis setup for my Formula 1000 race car. Many of you have been asking this for a while, so I thought I would bring you along and show you the steps as to putting a, or changing a setup on a Formula race car. With that, come on, let's get into it. Okay, today, so setup, huh? We're gonna do a setup on this, the Formula 1000 race car. And um, why am I doing this? So a lot of you have asked, um, hey, show me what you do on setup um, with the race car, just from a curiosity point of view. I've never done that. Honestly, uh, it wasn't hiding data from, from anyone. It was simply thinking that it was just kind of in the, uh, you know, in the meat of some details that most wouldn't be <laughs> interested in, right? So regardless of that, so today, um, I'm gonna drag you along to show you some of the setup activities that we do um, on this race car. So first, let me start with this. Um, before we get into uh, applying setup on this race car, let me, um, let me give you some background. So um, first, let's start with this. As a racer, typically you're always trying to improve, right? You're always trying to find that extra 10th, whatever that is, right, in, in lap time. And it really comes down to, it comes down to three principal things. So one, the driver, uh, the driver has a lot to do with the uh, overall performance of the, of the race car. The second would be power plant, the engine, um, its performance. And the third is chassis. And in chassis itself, um, that's a huge topic. And the behavior of the race car on the track, um, if it's a winged race car like my Formula 1000 or, or, or not, but there are so many changes or parameters, almost, it seems almost infinite that you can do in tuning your race car to get the absolute best performance on the racetrack. So all three of those are important um, and they all work together to optimize track time. Um, but chassis tuning is, um, is, a, is a huge topic by itself. So with, the, with that, you know, this video, I'm not gonna go through all of these excruciating details about the what and the why um, in, de in, in, in depth here. There's just, there's no way. Um, but I am gonna show you, and I will talk about some things. I will walk through and show you some of the typical things that, that we do um, as we put a setup on the race car, and you might find that of value. Okay, you know, so as I as I uh, walk around the shop here and get ready uh, to get this car and the scales, um, <laughs> let, let me let me throw this out as well. So, look, I own the race car. I drive the race car. I love the competitive aspect of racing itself. I also enjoy the actual wrenching and and um, involvement in. The development of the car so whether it be engine powertrain chassis and so on now now some drivers prefer some drivers prefer only to drive and leave the um the engineering deal details up to their crew chief uh, um, and so on look nothing wrong with that right i personally believe a well-rounded driver is a driver who not only can drive um, and have that natural raw talent, but also able to think, understand, and and um, help in chassis development itself. So it's not just a, a an engineer looking at data, making decisions on their own. It's a collaboration between the driver, the engineer, and the crew to ultimately arrive at consensus towards um, what changes need to be made. Now, um, that's an opinion that I have, and whether you actually wrench on the car or not, I think is, is a secondary thing. Um, but I would, recommend, I would recommend if you're looking to 
drive, race, improve your craft, your skill, be involved in not just the racing driving techniques, but but also the engineering aspects of your car. Um, things will make more sense to you and you'll be able to, to help in a much more, um, I would say, uh, positive way with your race engineer as you tune, develop, and improve the performance of your race car. Make sense? It's just my opinion. Okay, so let's get, let's get on to the car here. So first of all, um, this is the F1000, and it's up on the stands here at the moment. Let me walk over here and show you. So these are the, the scales that we have in place um, for the race car itself. There's a lift, if I roll over here, Here's the tablet, um, and I'll power that on here in, in a minute for the, um, the scales themselves. So why am I showing you this? Well, one recommendation is, it's, I think it's a requirement personally, but when you want to put a setup on your race car, you want to have a very consistent platform um, that is, is neutral, call it uh, zero, um, it's zeroed from left to right, forward to reverse, and so on. You want a platform that's very, very flat. And um, to do that, you really should have a scale. So this scale set up here, I don't move it. Of course, I've moved it many times over the years, but it's zeroed in, so there's no, um, there's no difference between front to rear and so on. It's a very flat platform. Um, you definitely want that. So whether you weigh the car or not, it, it's, it is part of some of the setup activities. You wanna have a platform that's very, very, very flat, okay? So let me talk a little bit about some of the, um, some of the precursor activities that we go through um, putting a setup on the race car. And uh, the, the first thing is tires. So we will, we will get the tires up to uh, their hot operating temperature, not by putting heat in the tires, we'll actually just with a gauge, we'll raise them up to their hot temp. Um, and then in parallel, we actually put weight inside the cockpit to mimic the driver, my body weight, and we actually take fuel out of the race car. So zero fuel, sandbags that basically mimic the driver's weight um, so it's it's uh, it's a replica of, of me being in the car and then the tires being at hot temp hot pressure excuse me right so that's the precursor before we do anything so with that let's get into that okay hey just for grins before I get into the car here let me show you um, some of the data that I collect just for setup, and I'm not going to pause on it, but I'm just going to scroll through it. So let me turn over here to my computer, and again, I use Motec, so I'm able to use um, I'm able to able to use an Excel document that feeds that feeds um, Motec itself. So if I scroll over, you can see some of the settings up here in the top. If I just keep scrolling over, over you can see. how much data is being collected. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Um, I thought you might find it of interest. I, I don't know how many parameters, but it's a lot, all right? Okay, so I turned down to the car. First thing I'm gonna do before I get it ready for the scales, I'm gonna put pressure um, to in the tires to make sure that they are at hot pressure, right? So here's a gauge that I use, and I need to go down here and actually put pressure in the tire, so bear with me as I try to hold the gauge and do this all with one hand. So that's showing 15 PSI, so I need to add, I need to add pressure. Now I do use, I do use nitrogen, by the way. Um, I would suggest you do that, and the why is nitrogen doesn't have the moisture in the air itself. It's it's dry. Um, if you have moisture in your tire, um, it's not as predictable when it heats heats up. So nitrogen nitrogen in your tires um, eliminates, or let's just say 
it's more predictable as the heat builds, your pressures will actually be a little more consistent. Does that make sense? All right, so I added some air. Let's see what this looks like now. Nope. So add a little more air. So for me, I go up to my hot temps. My hot pressure temps is about 21 PSI, so that's what I'm getting the tires up to. So one, let's try it again. Okay, there's 22, so now I gotta bleed it a little bit. Kinda hard to do this with one hand, so just a second. Okay, so I've raised this tire up to 21 PSI, so I, I need to do that now to 04. So let me go do that, and I'll come right back. Okay, so I have all the tires, all four tires up to 21 PSI. So they're ready to go. Now the next thing, the next thing is I need to take fuel out of the car. So um, this is one thing some of you probably haven't thought about. So with Formula race cars, very typical, and I've had, I don't know how many, half dozen, six, seven, eight of them over the years. Um, they don't have fuel gauges, by the way. <laughs> At least I've never seen that. And um, so how much fuel you have in the car is an interesting topic. The way we do it is we always empty fuel after a run. So we start at zero and we know how much fuel we're putting in the car. So when the car comes in after a run, we know how much, how many laps we've done. We know how much fuel we've taken out. We're able to calculate mile per gallon um, for um, expectations down the road, right? For a long run or qualifying and so on. But we always know where we're at. So that's how we do it. Um, now on the scales, we actually go to zero as well. And we do that so our setup is always consistent and uh, we have with zero fuel in the car there's no room for um, you know having a gallon in it or wh whatever that may, may be by mistake right so with that let's pull the fuel out so let me pan down here and show you what we do um, so this car before i get in there sorry this car um, we use a pdm which is a power distribution module that's what controls our actually everything electronically so our fuel pump water pumps coils on and on so what i'm able to do i can pan over here and show you so I, to drain fuel from the race car i just open up this uh motec pdm software you can see some of my output channels um, i use that to actually turn on and off the fuel pump when i'm not running so um, every race car uh, at least racing for racing purposes has to have a fuel test port so here's my test port that I use on my fuel rail, and I have that go up into an empty tank. Pretty straightforward, right? So then I go over here, and I, um, while the car is not running, but it's powered on, I go over here and just enable my fuel pump, and you can see it running. And so it's showing you there, if you get a little closer, it's taking uh, about nine amps right this minute. and. If I pan down here, you can see you can see it draining fuel, right? So I'm just uh, putting that into an empty empty jug. I'll let it run till it's empty. Now you might wonder, well, why do that? Just turn on your your uh, your switch, whatever it is that powers your fuel pump. In my setup, and a lot of race cars do this, my ECU actually controls my fuel pump and um, it's pulsed with modulated, right? So it's not on all the time, it's only on when it needs it for pressure. And um, that's why I do it this way, it just turns the pump on 100% uh, so I can drain the fuel. But um, anyway, so I'm doing this, draining the fuel. Once we're done with the fuel, um, getting that out of the car, I'll turn this off of course, and then I'll get the car on the ground, okay? All right, so now let's spin around, let's get the car off off it stands. I use these small little uh, safety stands below the car. And these are my new, if you, if you saw my other video, these are my new uh, lifts for the race car. So let's go over here, grab my handy dandy, here's my little tool for this thing. Let's uh, pick this up just a touch. Just to get it up enough so I can get my stands out. Let's do that. Go to the front of the car. And with, with 
two people, this is obviously a little easier. So here's my lift on the front of the car. So let's get this thing going. Cool. There's the front and there's the back. All right. So now I can lower the car. Let's go to the front first. So this I'll be uh, back and forth since it's just me uh, getting the car lowered here. So let's go back and forth. Again, all I'm doing is getting the car on the ground so we can get it up on the uh, on the jacks, right? These things are pretty sweet, by the way. Uh, MK Technologies on these these former quick jacks. probably go more than that I'm just taking it easy so bear with me I think I should have done this this video when I had Jeff here Okay, so the front is done. So from there, I just pull this thing out of the way. Pull the back. this guy out. Okay, so the car is on the ground. So let me get these jack stands out of the way and um, I'll roll it up in the scales and uh, bring you back down. All right, so as I walk over here, got the uh, car, I got it rolled up on the scales. I don't have it all the way in the pads yet and I'll show you why. Let me roll over here first. So if I pan down here, so these are lead weights. <laughs> and um, like here's a five pounder, three pounder, and so on, right? And the reason I'm showing you that, if I go down to the car in the cockpit, here's where I apply the weights where the driver should be in the car. And I do that because um, I'm, I'm not in the car. So that gives me um, the ability to actually have a consistent way for uh, weight and setup on the car. So that's a good place to go. So again, no fuel, have a driver weight in the car that way. And then the, the other thing I do is I actually go down here. Here's my um, long acre uh, scale. And I just do a, a zero. So all the corners are at zero before I roll the car up directly on the pad. So once I do that, I could just roll forward like so and now I have the car on the pads and it's been zeroed right so have my steering wheel straight forward make sure I'm rolled forward where I should be and now I can add the rest of my weight into the cockpit so let's do that all right so cars on the scales um, scales have been zeroed car has the weight in it there's all the sandbags ready to go so what are the tools that i use for chassis setup so let me go pull the tools out and get them ready the first the first is a this is my digital camber gauge so this is one tool that i use for cambers just set it up here out of the way go over here to the scales the second 
This is a digital angle finder. So I use this to measure my wings. And I have a couple pieces of just flat bar um, where I need that. And then here, these are just custom built jig fixtures for measuring front ride height. So let me put these on the car one handed here if I, if I can. So that's what I do. I set these. You just need to find a positive measure point that's consistent. And um, I use that for a uh, distance below. So let's put the other side on. There we go. So let me explain a couple things um, why we're putting this uh, other setup back up, uh, on the car. So. Um, <laughs> you know, as I, as I mentioned probably a couple thousand times in, in talking to you, um, you're always chasing yourself trying to get the absolute best out of the race car, right? Well, in chassis tuning, there are so many parameters that you can tune. Um, we thought, um, instead of backing into changes gracefully and, and slowly one at a time, which is the proper way to do it, we thought, you know what, we'll take a couple days um, out on the track and focus mostly on um, aero wings um, things like that and not working on lap time specifically but what we were calling we're gonna do some aero mapping right and so, you know maybe some of you have done this successfully uh, for us this didn't work but our idea was to go out on the track um, focus on a consistent run down the back straight um, with a, a um, an exit speed, you know, as close as possible to the same, run down the long straight uh, to determine top speed, which would correlate somewhat to drag. And um, we have load cells, so we'd measure down for us, right? Anyway, if you kind of get where I was going, um, we, we tried that multiple different times. And uh, from a logger point of view, we just, uh, we didn't feel like doing all these laps um, to try to measure those changes um, so it wasn't that uh, it wasn't accurate accurate enough to really be useful long story short um, to really to really map measure and understand especially formula race cars wings and things you really need a um, um, either CFD or really for the car you need it to be in a wind tunnel you know, that's a lot of money. Uh, that would be an awesome experience. If any of you out there have a wind tunnel or want to join me maybe in, in doing that at some point, you know, that might be kind of fun. But, you know, if you think about a, why a wind tunnel, you know, it's more of a laboratory setting. You can control the airflow over the vehicle um, much more precisely. You, you, you can measure changes um, very, very quickly. You get where I'm going. Anyway, so back to the car and the, and the uh, setup on the car. This is simply getting the car back to, um, this is getting the car back to where it should be and then we'll tune from there, that's all. So the very first thing I'm going to do is take this rear upper element off. And the reason I'm doing that is um, we, we put it in a medium downforce configuration. So I'm gonna change the, the second element on the top wing assembly, um, put it back in its high downforce uh, configuration. So anyway, I got to take this thing off, so I'll do that. So now that I, I have the upper dual el element portion of the wing assembly off, um, here's why I took it off, right? So um, the way this wing is set up to change this upper element, the secondary element here in the upper, you change out this, this bracket itself. And um, if I yeah, grab one here for you. So here's another bracket. Um, it goes in place here, and you can kind of see, or maybe you can't, but ultimately there are different, different, uh, different uh, mounting holes that change the orientation of this top upper. That's all that is. So let me go ahead and get this thing off. Okay. Okay. So if I pan down to the car, um, I do have the high down for force configuration of the upper dual element wing in place. So just pan around here so you can see what that looks like. 
So this is my high downforce uh, configuration for the upper. Now the lower main, um, I've left that in its uh, standard um, angle and configuration. So that was the only change on the rear wing. From there, now I need to change my cambers. Uh, I need to put the cambers back where they should be. I need to um, obviously check the ride height and the rake of the vehicle. Uh, the front main plane, this, um, I need to get the front main plane and the front flaps back where they should be. And so I'm gonna go ahead and do that next. So now I'm gonna focus on the front wing. I have not done the cambers yet, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and get my front main plane. So that's the angle of the front wing itself. Here you can see I have a flat bar installed. I have a digital angle gauge there in place. And uh, that's definitely not uh, my standard uh, uh, main plane angle. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that now. It's simply I have bolts here on both sides and that allows the uh, wing uh, uh, allows me to change the angle so let me go ahead and do that okay so I've adjusted my front main plane it's at the angle that I want it to be or very 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 close so now I'm going to move to the flaps let me show you how I do the flaps I grab a piece of uh, just a piece of flat bar and um, grab my digital angle finder and I simply hold it in place on uh, on the the flap itself just no pressure on it I just hold it where it's at and I see here um, the angle is definitely not where it needs to be so I have nice little adjusters here so I can just turn these adjusters until I get the angle that I want. Now, if you don't have adjusters, you'll have to use, you'll have to use, um, you know, whatever mounting bolts you have there. Uh, but these make it nice if you want to do any kind of quick change. So that's all I do for the front flap. So let me get both sides in place here. Okay, so I have my flaps, my front main um, set. Now, I have not done my cambers yet. So um, out of sequence, normally you, do your cambers first because it's going to make more uh, um, change to your suspension in total. Not a big deal. I'll double check my angles here in the front when I'm done. So I'm go ahead. I'll move towards changing cambers front and rear uh, to where they should be. Okay. All right. So first up, let's get over to the car. We're going to change the cambers on the car. So both the rear and the front, and I'm going to bring them back to the negative camber setting that that I want at least for the base baseline right so first up cambers for this car it's actually quite easy the front on this car if I pan down here I have a, a helm joint here with a lock nut right here and then inside this upper A arm there's a hex nut so if I grab a couple tools just like this big Allen wrench I can actually just get the Allen wrench right inside to get the, uh, the hex nut itself. I break this nut loose, and at that point I can actually move um, either direction, right, in or out to get the front camber where I want. Pretty cool, easy, um, easy actually. So before I do that, I'm gonna take a measurement of where I'm at, and here's, here's the, uh, the gauge that I use uh, from Intercom and a little digital angle finder for, for cambers. And so you turn it on, you zero it, and then you get it down on the wheel like this. Again, one hand here is a little awkward, but basically you get the idea. If I back up here a bit, you get it like this, and then you, you take a reading once that is at zero itself. Does that make sense? So here, let me try to turn it on. And I'll, uh, I'll zero it here once I have two hands free. But basically, if I go over here, watch that bubble, get it dead flat or zero, then at that point I can go down here and read the angle. So here you see a minus 1.3 or 1.4 kind of on the edge. So that's as simple as that is to read. 
let me go ahead and make my changes. I'm going to get this out, I believe, to a minus two. And uh, let me make a couple changes. I'll bring you back. Okay, so I've just adjusted this a couple different times. So what I do is I adjust a little bit. I put the, the camber device back on the wheel. I remeasure. If it's not quite right, I go back again and I make adjustment here, okay? So I do that. Now the car is sitting uh, with weight on it. Um, once I get them close, what I'll do, I'll go over here to the front of the vehicle. I'll use my quick jack. I'll get it up off the ground just for a second, back down, and then give it a couple good, kind of good pushes, make sure it squats um, in, a, in the proper sitting position, right? So just make sure there's nothing weird. Then I'll take another measurement, all right? So I did the front right. Now I'm, let's focus on the front left. Okay, so I've adjusted both sides, picked the front up, put it down, uh, put it back down the ground, you know, gave it a couple of good pushes, and went back and then remeasured both, uh, both left and um, right side. Pretty close. Um, I'm going to have to make a small adjustment again. That's not that abnormal. Um, you kind of go back and forth, usually two or three times. Um, to get both sides where you want them and then you tighten it up. Okay, so let's go back and do that now So as I look forward I'm Not sure if you can see much but uh, anyway the negative camber on the front Both sides is set I didn't go crazy. I went uh, I for my setting just to share I'm using currently a negative 1.7 uh, Degrees camber on the front So both sides were set now I need to focus to the rear and uh, these need a little more negative camber again. I, I, uh, I brought them a little more upright. You know, the cambers, you can adjust your uh, overall balance of the car, how much tire you're, you're on track and so on. Depends on the roll, lots of variables. If you need to put more heat in the tires, one, one of several ways to do that is a little more negative camber it will um, it will run the inside tire of course hotter than uh, mid and outside but it will uh, create more heat in the tires um, so it's, it's you're dancing with the right balance on that um, the other thing just for reference cambers especially rear naturally all four corners right it also will change the characteristics of turn in on corners and typically um, more camber will allow the car to rotate easier in the corners. Look, if you think about it, especially the slow speed stuff, you have less contact patch on the road to a degree. And um, anyway, so that's just a way if you if you need to from a rotation point of view, you need, need keep that in mind as well. So anyway, with that, let me get on to the rears. And just to explain what I need to do, again, I'll take a measurement here. I'll have to get for my application, I'll have to get, if you can see my, my Allen wrench here, I'll have to get in and loosen up these four corners or four bolts. I have um, two spacers on the upper A-arms. If you can see where I'm pointing here with this Allen wrench, you got one here and I got one up there. That is what you use to change camber on the rear, um, rear tire. So let me, take some measurements, see where that's at, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've broken these bolts loose on the rear of the car, getting ready to make a camber change. Let me just show you um, what we have in here. So these are nothing more than shims. If I pull this one out here, I can get it. So here's an example of a shim, right? And the thickness is what is used to determine how much movement you're making. So what, what you do, if I can do this one hand, you'll use a, a, a dial indicator, you'll take a measurement. So here you can see this is a 0 0.062 um, inch thickness, the width of this shim. And that's how, now it doesn't tell you how much degrees um, you're moving the camber. Of course, if you take very good notes, you'll know over time. But um, that's how you actually apply and make changes front and rear on the A-arm. So what I do, let me walk down over here. So I know I, I need to add a little more camber 
negative camber in the rear. I took some out. And um, I have a, a pile of shims that I use, different thicknesses and so on. And let me go back to the car again. So explaining this, it's pretty straightforward. When you add, when you add more shims to the upper A-arm, you push the tire out, right? And you stand it up more positive. Um, when you take shims out, the, the camber in the rear goes in, you get more negative camber. Does that make sense? So let me play with some measurements here, see what changes I need to make, and uh, I'll bring you back in a minute, okay? All right, so I've made a couple changes. I took out uh, both shims front and rear on the top upper A-arm, and so now I'm gonna go back and see if I can do this with one hand. I'm gonna take a measurement. Let's see, get this thing zeroed. It's about zero. See the bubble there? Close to zero, there we go. Anyway, that shows about 1.7. That's a bit much. Looking for, I think about a 1.3, 1 1.4 negative in that range. So let's see the left. Driver's left. Yeah, I probably took out too much shim is what I'm guessing. Again, one hand here is kind of interesting. When you're doing this, uh, 1.5. So that's, I could live with that, I think. So let me go back. Um, so the process at this point, if I can get my scale fixed here. The process at this point is you take your shims out, what you think is the right amount. You need to tighten up your struts, your mounting points, get the car back down on the ground, and then take your measurement. You have to do that each time. So now uh, to make another change, I'll loosen those up again, raise the car with the quick lifts here, and um, modify my shim. So because I'm a little, a little more negative on the right side here than I want, um, I'll end up putting a small amount of shim back in to get the, uh, looking at the tires here, to get the tire camber about where I want it. Makes sense. So let me, uh, let's make that change. All right, I've made the camber changes, front and rear, got the negative cambers where I want it. Um, I need to check the toe uh, to make sure that alignment is correct. So I'll take you through the steps of doing toe. I'll do toe next, and then I'll focus on right height at that point. And um, yeah, we'll go from there. So let's get on the toe. All right, so let me walk over to the race car and uh, show you these fancy things. So what is this, right? Well, it's just a, it's just a straight tube and it says front top. And, and if you notice, I have one here in the rear of the car. So let me try to explain uh, setting setting toe on the vehicle you need to have a straight edge um, or string that many people use and that's what i use i use fishing line actually and you need to be able to get it on the car and you need to have a build a reference to um, to measure right so what i've done here is i have this fancy <laughs> just nothing more than a straight bar mounted on the rear of the car and i have these um, bolts here at the end um, I'll do the same for the front, and then I'll, I'll run a string around each side so I can actually take measurements, um, if that makes any sense. So let me get the front mounted and then get the, get the string on, or, or I'll show you how I'm doing that with the, uh, with the string itself, and then how you'll actually measure the toe, okay? Okay, so I've mounted the rear bars, I've shown you, actually if you roll forward, I had to take the nose off of the race car to get this bracket on. So these are just custom um, mounting bars, right? Nothing special. You gotta find a, a straight spot, a good location that you could reuse all the time. So here's the front of the race car. And I have these um, eyelets here, if you wanna call it that, for my fishing line. So now what I'm gonna do is take this fishing line and string it around the entire car so I have a straight line 
this reference to the chassis. If that makes any any sense, let me show you. So I had the string mounted. Let me walk around and show you what that looks like. Um, it's simply you have you have a, a a measured point that's the same front to rear. So if I go down to both ends, I have these um, mounting bolts, if you want to call it that, right? That's um, uh, measured. It's pretty precise. Uh, so the the distance the distance left to right is the same, right? So I'm not sure if you can see that, but I have a fishing line here that rolls all the way up to the front, and then I just bring it around and it rolls back over to that side. So both um, both sides, front to rear, have have uh, this this string in place. So once the string's in place, so what do you do? How do you measure, right? So you want to make sure your front your steering is centered it's important and you got to watch that if there's a way to kind of lock it in place carefully you might want to do that but you got to pay attention to that so on the front you have you have to have a precision ruler and so what you do is you you take for an example i, put, I use the rim not the tire because that could change i use the rim and i bring that up here i take a reading I go back to the back side and I take the reading here as well. And you do that on all four corners, uh, all four corners. Once you do that, you need to write it down, of course, that will give you um, a measurement of either toe in or toe out. And um, that's how you actually measure. And typically, but not always, at least for me, I always run the front of the race car as I point to it. So I run the front with a little bit of toe out, it allows the car to turn in easy, easier. And on the rear, just to keep it stable, I'll have a little bit of toe in. And the front, it varies. Um, I use roughly about close to an eighth of an inch in total for toe out. And I use about a sixteenth of an inch uh, toe in on the rear. Okay, it's just a, um, it's my preference. <laughs> Now I measure that in, in millimeters and I log that, of course, where it needs to be. So let me take some initial readings on each corner and then I'll show you what I found and how far off we are and what changes I need to make, okay? All right, so I have, I have the initial measurements on the car for tow on each corner. So, you know, as I showed you just again here really quick, you have to take a measurement. So here's the left rear, for an example. You take the measurement on the rear, then you take the measurement on the front, and you do that on each corner of, of the uh, car, right? So once you do that, then you need to calculate where your settings are. So let me pan over here and show you my screen. Um, it's a little busy, bear with me. So point here to the top. So this is actually my measurements from the front of the car, this top section. And you can see um, in both inches and then millimeters, and you can see the um, the difference between the front to um, rear measurement uh, on each of the corners, right? So I try to get the front toe out actually more like one eighth of an inch and the rear toe in about one sixteenth. So you can see here I'm off a bit, um, a fair amount. And then ultimately I have my target change down here of what I'm looking to put on the car. <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, so hopefully it does. It's it's somewhat tedious. It's not that big of a deal. You, usually you make a couple changes. You make sure your steering wheel stays centered. Um, you make a couple changes. You have to go back and remeasure, remeasure, and um, you do this a couple iterations until you finally get your toe set where you want it to be. All right. So let me get in, make the changes, and I'll I'll bring you back. All right. I have. I have the toe set front and rear in the car. I'll walk over and show you here really quickly. If I can do this with one hand, um, go back to the camera. If I can do this with one hand, how I measure. Now you could use um, a precision ruler um, or a um, uh, dial indicator. So let's try the dial indicator approach. So let me spin down here to the car. Um, if I get that out of the way. If I go down here, I'm not sure if you can see that string, but basically what I do is I go right on the rim 
if you can see that and then I pull I pull the dial indicator out just until I get to the string see that and then I take that reading so that would be the front and then on the rear same thing I go on the inside of the, of the rim there a consistent spot and I go all the way out until I just touch the string and there's my reading does that make sense so I do that uh, on all the corners it is a uh, somewhat of a tedious job um, I find myself going back and forth it took me probably uh, well I wanted to be relatively accurate this time it took me probably close to an hour which is a little crazy but uh, you could probably do a quick toe in in a matter of uh, um, you know maybe 15 20 minutes uh, if you wanted to but let me turn over here to the screen so this is my initial reading that I had when I first measured measured the car right so you can see I actually had um, a toe out on the front um, more so than it should be on the front left that is on the front right it was actually toe in a touch now this is with my steering wheel centered so that could have been off slightly in the past that's all that was on the rear you can see um, the left rear uh, was not too far off 0.07 uh, instead of about, about a 0.06 so pretty close actually the right side however was uh, had quite a bit more toe in uh, than it needed so there was quite a bit of change here's what i have now in place you can see the target for the front for an eighth of an inch is about 0.0625 on each side that gives you about 0.125 which is an eighth of an inch up front a sixteenth of an inch in the rear you want about a 0.0315 so uh you know it's the left here is just a touch more toe in not too bad though so that's where that is not too big a deal right um so i'll tighten up everything and uh, move on to the next phase of uh setup all right so i have the toe set i have the camber set on the car the next thing i'm going to do is right height so front and rear of the car i'm going to make sure the right height is where i expect it to be i have i have not changed that recently but it can change from time to time so let me roll over here and show you what um what i do on the car for right height first first if you look i do have if you see right here this guy i do have right height sensors uh, that are their laser sensors actually on the car. So there's uh, two in the rear left and right and um, If I roll over here to the front of the car You can't well you, uh, you may might be able to see it see way down there. You see that little red dot anyway um, <laughs> There's a uh, there's a laser uh, Right height sensor in the front of the car as well. Okay, so that is really all I need. However, just because I've always done it a different way as well, I also measure and it's just kind of a, a thing of habit as well. So I actually have, I've actually have these brackets made that just sit on a suspension point on the front, if you can see that. And these are just a piece of metal um, for the purpose of measurement, uh, front right height. So there's one here, one on the other side. And if I go all the way down here, you can see the, there's a gap between um, this piece of metal and that pad. That's a measurement point, right? And then on the rear of the car, and this is not as accurate, but I just do it out of, uh, again, repetitive habit. I actually measure from my floor point right here at this junction to this, this um, ramp position. And this doesn't change, it's, it's a consistent piece but I measure here as well. Again, that's just for reference, right? So um, pretty straightforward. On laser, on laser, you have to actually have um, the Motec data logger running. And um, let me just show you what that looks like here really quick, um, just for reference, right? Let me turn to my uh, computer so you can see. 
So here I have my data logger, um, and I use an embedded one, so I don't have a display here, but that's okay. If I go to monitor channels, so this is, this is live data uh, from the car itself. It's not running, but it doesn't matter. And I can scroll all the way down. You can see I have a lot of data here, right? So I just highlighted here, you can see laser front, laser left rear, right rear, and then you go over here, you can see the actual distance in inches, right? Pretty trick. So that's actually the official um, um, ride height. I mean, it's, it's the one that I go by. It's the one that I calculate my rake, that type of thing. Again, I measure those other points just for grins. But um, anyway, let me get over here, do some measurements with my handy dandy my handy dandy ruler, right? And uh, see where I'm at and uh, we'll go from there, okay? All right, um, I have the ride height uh, measured on the car. Uh, front, rear, um, to the major po points that I talked about. So I used a ruler just to double check and verify. I took my readings from the laser uh, front and then the dual lasers in the rear. Oh, by the way, wh why two, two lasers in the rear, right? Well, if you have any body roll, you know, it's a way to actually see that. Now you wanna make sure, if you're gonna use laser ride height sensors, you wanna make sure you have them mounted on a fixed point on the chassis. Um, if you do that, you calibrate them once, you'll never have to touch or change them again. Um, and it is quite sweet to actually see a real, um, a real ride height logged while you're on the track so you can see um you can see all the compression clearance down to you know uh, several decimal places so very very cool now the next thing i'm going to do going back to the car so i have made some changes to the wings earlier that you saw uh, main plane front and, and flaps um, i did change the rear upper uh, configuration for the high downforce I need to take I need to take measurements on those and or potentially um, last minute alterations. Now that the car has settled, it's um, all the chassis tuning, um, ride height, cambers, all those things are, are done. So I'll do that as the last step um, before I, I complete my setup. Now though, uh, just because um, nothing will change mechanically on the car. I can go ahead and do my uh, corner weights and make sure my cross weights are set. So what I have, I use, um, this is a long acre system, pretty cool. So I gotta turn this thing on. The tablet itself, this tablet uh, I can take apart obviously and then um, just pick it up and carry it around which is way cool. Now I'm gonna actually go over here and roll the car back a little bit if I can get stuff out of the way that is and the reason I'm doing that I'm gonna roll it back just just a touch um, so I get them off the scales and it's a good idea you do this um, before you actually weigh you want to make sure you you got the um, the scales zeroed so you can see mine here it's it's actually zero but uh, I'll go ahead and just re-zero okay so once you do that, you can roll the car forward, get it back on the pads, make sure your steering wheel is center, like that. Now you notice I have my lead weight in here, right? You saw me earlier put that in. I have no fuel in the car, and I do that because I, I want a consistent, I want a consistent, um, uh, measurement of weight, my corner weight. So at this point, I can now go over to my scales and I can actually look at, here's my corner weights, front left, front right, and so on. Here's my cross weight, which is an important one. Now that's 49.38. Um, look, that's very close. You wanna have it at 50% if you can. This is so close. 
I'm not going to make any changes, quite honestly. I'm just going to re record these values and um, record those values and uh, move on to my arrow measurements. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention. So if you do have any cross-weight um, cross uh, um, uh, measurements on, 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 your, uh, on your car that are off, it's you know, way more than just a couple tenths of 50% uh, balance, you'll need to make some changes to the chassis. So what do you do, right? You can either focus on the front of the car and or the rear of the car and you actually will use your push rods, your suspension. Um, on that particular corner, you'll, you'll tweak your ride height slightly. So you can actually work on just one corner of the car. If you're just a couple tenths or so off, in your cross weight and as you do that as you increase increase one corner for an example you'll actually shift the weight around um, on that corner itself that's how you actually tune to get your cross weight set up pretty easy right okay i'm close to being done now i'm going to go ahead and just take some wing angle measurements uh, the first thing I'll do is just start in the rear because uh, because I'm sure my lower main is uh, fine. I have not moved that. Um, now, changing changing the rake on the car, of course, is going to change your wing angles. I think you you might know that. But uh, on this um, on this platform that's level and zeroed, uh, you know, it's consistent, so I should have the same reading. Anyway, I'll do my measurement here. I'll measure my upper wing elements. Then I'll move back to the front making sure that my my front main is what I want that to be and my front flaps, okay? So I'll just double check those. There should not be any change. Uh, if there is, I'll make a correction. From there, the last thing that I'll do will be to zero my sensors. And I'll show you that on MoTeC, what that is and why. Um, but first thing, let's go ahead and do some measurements on the wings, right? So here's how I do my wing angles. So this isn't very scientific necessarily, right? Whatever system you use, you want to be consistent. So I lay a just a flat bar over my wing here, and I take my digital angle gauge. I lay it on that surface that's the reading that I get. Now a down arrow or up arrow tells you if you're negative or positive on the angle itself, but I'll do that. I'll take a reading and then on the upper, let me just show you what I do here. Again for consistency, I use a flat bar on this surface itself and I take the reading and then I'll actually lay which is more accurate. I get this out of the way, sorry. Um, I'll just put my angle finder on the upper wing element like this to take a measurement. Right, pretty straightforward. Let me do that. I've shown you when I, uh, what I've done on the front. Um, so let me go around and double check every, every uh, wing angle, okay? Okay, let me walk over the car. Um, the uh, logger is on. Make sure my steering wheel's centered. That's about right. And it's on the pads. Wings are done. I did have to do a quick um, main plane on the front um, uh, modification. The angle was off slightly. You know, it, that happens when you do big uh, chassis changes. It can happen. So any, anyway, the car, uh, the car is completely ready to go. Now the last thing, the last thing to do here is to zero sensors. And uh, it's important that you do that for a lot of your calibrations. So let me go ahead and um, let me turn over to my MoTeC data logger here. Let, let me uh, show you and explain, okay? So this is the, uh, the 185 data logger. Uh, and again, that's for the dash version or the embedded. And I have the embedded just for your reference. Um, you have a thing called zero sensors here. And here I have multiple things from steering, shocks, lasers. You can see these one at a time. So I go through those and I zero them um, each and every time I do a chassis setup change. So here is my steering wheel 
you can see it's off slightly. All I do is I go over here to zero and I go zero and it's done. Shock pots. This is my zero setting for my potentiometers on each uh, dampener. So I can go zero all. Lasers. Here's my ride heights. Now, I do not zero those because I want to know um, what the current ride height is. And zero for those laser uh, sensors is actually hitting uh, the track surface. Okay, so I do not zero them. They're actually the the value of right height uh, for that moment. Uh, engine run hour, I don't need to do that. Then I have um, the accelerometer um, that's embedded in the logger. I don't really use this one much, but I go ahead and zero this the same time. Uh, instead, I use, um, I use a much higher end version of accelerometer and a gyrometer at the same time. So the IB6, here you can see my my three axis accelerometer, my three axis uh, gyrometer. And so I can go zero all and they're ready to go. Uh, zero third spring. So this, I have a third spring or, um, um, I, well, I've talked about this before. I, I have a third spring on the car. It's on the front um, and it keeps me from hitting the deck. I do not want this to be zeroed. When that is zero, it's actually touching the, um, the, the hard stop, so I leave that alone. Strain gauges, uh, so these are load cells on each corner, and you definitely wanna zero these. So there they go, they're all zeroed. And at that point, I just go, okay, and it says send it to the device, and I say yes, and that's it. It's broadcasting now those changes, the calibration changes to the vehicle, and that's it. It's all done. Well, that's it for this video. Quite long, actually. Um, now, as you probably noticed, I did not touch my dampeners. I did not make any, um, any shock or dampener changes. Uh, springs, um, the low or the high speed settings on the dampeners, I left those alone. Many times, um, springs, um, you know, dampener changes are pretty common. I, I like my settings where they're at, so I did not touch those. Uh, possibly another video, I'll just do uh, dampeners and uh, uh, spring rates and, and such, uh, because that's a little more involved. So I did, I did the most common type of setup changes that we do for our race car. Um, but that's it for this video. I, I want to thank you for taking the time to watch the video. Uh, you know, comments, questions, you know, shoot those across. Uh, I'll try to get back to you as quick as I can. And um, we've got a bunch of cool videos coming out. We'll be, we'll be doing a private test day uh, here in about three, four weeks. Um, and we'll have a, a bunch of other racers coming out uh, just for some hardcore testing. So that will be kind of fun. We do have another race, uh, double header coming up. Um, it's just a regional. Um, it will be in mid-November, so I'll bring you along on that. Um, it's a different track. It's not at uh, Eagles Canyon, our home track. It's at uh, Motorsport Ranch. Uh, I, I just want to run down there. I haven't done that in a while, so I think you might find that kind of cool. And there's a few more, um, a few more things coming that I think you'll like as we try to get our, our heads wrapped around um, the aero balance on the race car, as we try to play with different um, devices, if you will, um, aero uh, devices on the race car and so on. Anyway, there'll be a, another video on that. That's it for today. Oh, if you haven't subscribed, come on, please consider doing so. I'd really appreciate that. We're trying to get to our, our magical 1000 subscriber number and you know we have a ways to go, um, but I would appreciate it if you subscribe. And that's it for now. Until next time, we'll see you. Ciao.